Okay, I had a customer that I just spoke to that is new to learning VCarve. He's doing great, but he wants to do the finishing cuts. So he's got some three quarter inch plywood that he's cutting. So he's going to make multiple cuts through. And then if we use the finishing allowance, we can oversize those first three passes by a 20 thousandths or so. And then the, the last cut comes in, the edge of the bit will be along the side of the vector and will clean up the witness lines that may be apparent from each of the different step downs. So here's how we do it. Okay, in this example, I've got a four by eight sheet of three quarter inch material. I'm gonna to touch off the tool on the top of the material surface and my XY datum is on the bottom left-hand corner of my drawing. So, when I'm sitting at the console and the machine is homed, it's down on this end. And the machine would work toward our left because we're facing looking this way. Make sense? Okay. That's it. I've got a 12 by 12 square that I want to cut out with a finish size of 12 by 12 because it's three quarter inch plywood and I'll use a quarter inch bit. I'm going to, to make multiple passes to cut through the material. So we'll tell it okay. And I will close the design curtain and go to the tool pathing curtain because there's nothing I need to do here. I just want to cut that out. So I'm going to switch over and I'll do a profile tool path. And I will select how deep I want to cut. I'm going to cut the thickness of the material, T, plus 0 0.020. So I'm going to go 20 thousandths of an inch into the spore board. So T plus 0 0.020 equals 0.77. No problem. I'm going to do that in three passes, or let's make it four. And if we look at those again, each pass is 1925. So it's a little proud of 3 sixteenths. That's fine. I'm going to be outside the toolpath. Now, if I just go down and tell it to cut it, and we ramp in over three quarters of an inch or three or four times the diameter of the tool. And that'd be a profile, the way I would name it. It'd be profile cutout. The 0.25 down spiral. No vector selector. Selected, sorry. So I'm going to select it and calculate it. It warns me that it's going to cut through the material and that's okay gives me the 3D view and I lost my 2D view and typically the, the 3D view would be reset like this. This was from earlier. I had recorded this video but I didn't have the microphone set loud enough. So we wouldn't need to switch to the 2D view to look at what I want to see. When I have a certain tool path checked we can turn on or off the display of that tool path on the 2D view. So what I'd like to do is basically see the thickness of the tool working its way around the material. The other way they can show is just showing the direction of the cut, and this is showing the center of the tool. But sometimes I want to have control as to where the edge of that tool is. Is it on this vector or not? So what we'd like to do the first time is do it this way. I'm going to do a 20 thousandths of an inch last pass allowance. So what that's going to do is going to take the tool away from this vector by 20 thousandths of an inch for the first three of the four passes. Then the fourth pass, they bring the edge of the tool up against the vector and it kisses and just whisks away the three witness lines from the first three passes. So I'll have it calculate that. It warns us it's going to cut through the material. Go back to the 2D view. And then if I zoom in, you'll see what it did. Okay, so that's pass one, two, and three. Then the fourth pass has brought it in that 20 thousandths of an inch. If I come over here and kick on the blue line, that's not as useful right now because it's got multiple passes. So the first three passes, it's staying this far away. And then the fourth pass, it's moving over and touching it. But that's 
a very simple way to do it. Yes. Another way to do it would be to turn this off. So I'm going to call this So this method is using a separate last pass. So this is recalculating with a new name. Now, one other way to do it is to turn that off. And we're going to do a new profile cut. And rather than going all the way through the material, we're going to assume that this is a 0.75 thick material. So it's MDF for some kind of acrylic. So I'm going to go 0.73 as my total depth of cut. And I'm going to be outside, but I'm going to do a 20 thousandths allowance here. So this basically is going to leave an onion skin. It's 20 thousandths of an inch of uncut material at the bottom of, this, of, the, more, of, of the board. And then I'm going to come back through after I've done all of this all over the, the, the panel. I'm going to come back through and cut that 20 thousandths out and whisk away this 20 thousandths of an inch vertically. So we'll do it this way and we'll call it profile outside 0 0.020. We'll calculate it. And it pops up. And now the blue line shows what we were doing. That's 20 thousandths of an inch off of the vector. When I showed it earlier with this one, it made the pass that three times that looked like this. And then the final pass should have a white line here but this is the total of the pass. So it's just different ways to do it. So I can do it this way, cut and engrave, do everything I need for everything, but I've still got 20 thousandths of an inch holding it everywhere. And then I could go do a final pass and just whisk that away and cut the finished 20 thousandths. So I'm gonna go another 20 thousandths into the spoil board. So that'll be the 0.7 seven and I'm gonna do that in one pass because I'm gonna do it after I've done all of this so this is gonna all be carved out except it's gonna kiss away this twenty thousandths of an inch I don't need a separate last pass it's going to be against the vector I changed the name to final pass 0 0.020 deep and up to the vector. That way when I calculate it, it'll make sense when we look at it. It warns us that it's going to cut through the material. We tell it OK. And if I go back to the 2D view, I'm going to turn off all the machining. Pass 1, 2, and 3. I have not cut through the material, and I'm not up to my vector. Fourth pass full depth, just kissing 20 thousandths away and 40 thousandths deep overall. So that's two different approaches to do the same thing, depending on how you want to hold it down. This second approach is called onion skinning. And it's very effective because you don't have to use tabs for a lot of parts. Um, if the part is fairly large and fairly heavy, just the weight can hold it down because we're just kissing 20 thousandths of an inch. So a lot of information there. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call or email. I'm Eric Schiller at 205-871-6618 at yetismartbench.com. Thanks.